Okay, so now I'm uh, proud to introduce Tony Cerna, who's the Data and Strategy Coordinator for CCL. We'll be speaking about California at the state level and CalFact. Tony Cerna. Hi, folks. Um, so among other things, I also have been holding the portfolio of uh, State Policy Coordinator for CCL, something that we're actually in the process of reviewing applications for a, a new person to take that over full time. Uh, in the last year, California uh, had an opportunity to engage on, on the state level on carbon pricing policy as the cap and trade policy in California was uh, up for renewal. And a group of us, uh, as CCL volunteers, we started a new organization called Californians for a Carbon Tax, uh, CalFact. And uh, so it was a small group of us. Uh, many of the folks are here in the room. Uh, uh, Robin Cooper, Marty Roach, Mary Selkirk, and, and many others were uh, very active in that, in that organization. And we uh, met regularly. We met with a lot of our state legislators. We did lobbying in Sacramento. And we were supporting um, a bill called uh, SB 775, which would have taken the cap and trade system and made it uh, much more similar to, uh, to our policy uh, in the sense of it would have had a steadily rising uh, floor level. It would have uh, returned money as a part, part of the money as a dividend. Uh, unfortunately, uh, despite our efforts and the efforts of many around the state, that uh, bill did not pass, and instead a different uh, cap-and-trade extension did pass the, the legislature this year and was um, approved by the governor. And, um, you know, there's a lot of good news and some bad news in that. Um, the good news is that California still has carbon pricing, which, uh, you know, is a good thing. We think there's a lot of support uh, that we get from that. Um, also, the, when it passed, it passed with bipartisan support. There were eight Republicans who voted to support the policy, and uh, that is also a good sign for California politics as well as, uh, you know, our efforts to make climate a bipartisan issue. Uh, we also, in that process, those of us working in CalFact had some great opportunities to build relationships with our elected officials as well as with um, other California activists on climate, especially in the environmental justice community. And so, uh, you know, after seeing what happened in Washington State around carbon pricing, we wanted to make sure that we were really reaching out to the environmental justice community and were pleasantly surprised to see their support for a dividend, uh, you know, being part of the cap and trade system in California. There were some bad news um, in, in the process. We don't think that the, the bill that did pass, we thought it weakened the cap and trade system in certain ways. Um, it also, um, the Republicans who did support it got a lot of backlash on that. So there, while they were willing to take that political risk, there was not uh, necessarily the political will in their district to have them feel supported by that afterwards. Uh, but all in all, I think it was a, a great experience. The group is still uh, meeting and looking at how we engage in California uh, politics ongoingly, and uh, we welcome others who want to participate in in uh, in CalFact's work. Though it is much at a, at a much lower level now that the cap and trade system has uh, been renewed. And I also wanted to mention that, uh, that this September, uh, some of you have probably heard that there's a clim a global climate summit that's happening in San Francisco. Jerry Brown has called for that and is bringing uh, people from around the world to uh, San Francisco and. The event itself is going to be sort of an in, is, is likely to be an invite only thing. I don't think we're going to be able to sit at the table at that. Although uh, CCL's uh, international coordinator uh, Joe Robertson is working on that, and if you're interested in engaging on the citizen level with that, um, you can go to you, you'd want to work with our international team, and that's. Uh, the best way to do that is to go to their website, which is Engage for Climate, which is the number four. So engage the number four climate.org. And, um, and so there will be some sort of CCL presence uh, surrounding that event, but we're still working on what that, that looks like. But uh, Northern Californians should be uh, ready to engage on that. September 12th through the 14th are the dates on that. So I think that's, that's all for me. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> All right, thank you, Tony. And now I'm really excited to introduce this next speaker to you. You all, well, I don't know if you all know her, but many of you know her. Uh, Dr. Tasha Reddy is our California State Coordinator. Yeah. So get this, she has a PhD in oceanography from Stanford University and has 
um, completed postdoctoral work at NYU and NASA studying climate change in the Arctic using supercomputers. Yeah, look at that. Uh, she joined CCL in 2013 when she heard Jim Hansen speak twice in one week. In addition to working for CCL, she is a lecturer at San Jose State University where she teaches undergrads about climate change. So please uh, join me in welcoming Dr. Tash Tasha Reddy. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Let's see. Does this sound good like that? OK. Um, well, I want to welcome you all here. Thank you for coming. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy lives and weekends to be here as we work on this most important problem. I'll start out right now by um, thanking the volunteers that made this weekend possible. Um, so I'll just go down a short list, and for those of you in the audience, you can stand if you want when I call your name. Um, the food team did a fantastic job putting together uh, two vegan breakfasts and a vegan lunch for us. Um, so Ellen Dooley, uh, who's back here right now, uh, she waves at, at all of you. <laughs> um, yeah, food amazing. And Ellen had a team helping her. Um, it was Joey, Belinda, and Joan, so thanks so much to them as well. Yeah, really great job. Um, I want to thank the coordinators for our wonderful breakout sessions, Heath Massey and David Kane. If you want to stand up, if you guys. Very well done. We have an, an amazing array of breakout sessions this afternoon. I'm really excited. Um, we had help inviting our wonderful keynote speakers. I'd like to recognize Carl Dams and Peter Joseph for helping with those. Uh, and invitations to, to tomorrow, a Sunday morning panel. Suds Jane coordinated that, so thank you, Suds. Um, let, uh, for the rest, let's just hold the applause till the, the end. Um, there's just a couple more. Um, for AV help, we have Jeff and Tim back there in the booth. Thank you so much. We could not have done this without you two. Oh, sorry. Let's just clap. <laughs> OK. Yeah, so Jeff Whittington and Tim Deck back there. Uh, housing, um, Edgar Ross this year organized our housing again. Thank you, Edgar. Raise your hand if you, get, if you provided housing or, or accepted housing. OK, great. <laughs> we clap for that, too. <laughs> um, I want to thank Claudia McDonough as well for organizing our event volunteers this weekend. Well done, Claudia. And next on my list is our wonderful MC, Stuart, come out here and say hi. Thank you, Stu thank you Stuart. And then my two right-hand men, men in planning all of this, um, again, Carl Danz and Tim Deck. Thank you so much. OK, so let me take a moment to go over some logistics, because um, a lot of you have had some questions. Um, so the idea with the program is that it's all accessible online, and you should be easily able to look it up on your phone and figure out what all the breakout sessions are. We have breakout descriptions and speaker bios. OK, so to get to it on your phone, the easiest way is to put in our short uh, web address, which is, yep, you ready? cclusa.org. So one more time, cclusa.org, and then slash NorCal. And that'll take you right to our registration page, and you just keep scrolling down and down, and all the, the program information is there. We do have about 100 printed programs that should be circling around, so if you have one of those, please share it with someone who doesn't have their phone with them. Um, yeah, questions? Uh, yeah, come back around here. Okay. Um, 
Okay, let's see what else logistics. So we have a, an amazing vegan lunch coming up from Life Kitchen. Uh, thanks again to our food team for putting that together. Um, the, you've all seen the cafeteria by now. We don't have room for everyone to sit all at once, so we'll kind of have to go in phases. Uh, lunches and, uh, are amazing wraps as well as a uh, lovely salad, so we don't have to worry about the food getting cold. Um, so I'm, sh I'm sure we'll um, figure that out during lunch. Um, oh, speaking of lunch, so for the first few minutes of the lunch period, if you are a breakout speaker or if you are hosting a breakout speaker um, and you aren't in the theater, uh, I'd like you to go and just check on your spaces and make sure you have the right connectors f um, between your laptop and the, co the projectors in the rooms. Um, Speaking of breakout sessions, so the, we have six spaces for breakouts. We have this theater, we have the cafeteria, we have the library. We showed you the map, but the library is kind of just across the courtyard. And then we have three classrooms. Unfortunately, they're way down at the end of the hall. So you'll find the B wing, and then you just keep walking to the end, and you'll find B1, 2, and 3. Okay, so after the breakouts, we're going to report back here. So we'll just have everyone, you know, come back. We, there's a 10 minute period of time where you can make your way back here. And we'll spend 20 minutes sort of debriefing the session. Um, so if a few of you want to be prepared to present one to two minutes about what happened in your breakout, uh, p please uh, be prepared for that. And then we can have you guys come up and, and share. Okay. So I was going to share some numbers with you, but since we're a little short on time here, um, I'll just sh share um, two. Uh, one, I'd li I want to share the number of supporters we have in the state of California. Do you guys have ideas of the, uh, the number of supporters we have? Wow. 11. There's a good guess. 11. One, two, three. Uh, uh, um, okay, so. Last year, we had 12,000 supporters at this time of the year last year. So for the state of California, it's the, the, the most supporters of any CCL region. And this year, any guesses? We have over 15,000 supporters now, which is just fantastic. And then the other number, yeah, we can clap for that. <laughs> it's a lot of supporters. <laughs> Um, and then the other stat I'll share with you is attendees at these conferences. So in 2016, we had 120 people as part of this conference. Last year, we had around 220. And this year, we have just hit 300. So that's fantastic. Okay, so I'll, I'll end with a quote. Uh, I won't tell you who it is, and we'll just have a quick guess and see if you guys know. Um, I'll give you a hint. You, you, you might have to be a sports fan. So the quote is, I'm not afraid to fail. You're going to succeed a lot, but you're going to fail 10 times more. Whether I make the shot or miss the shot, I feel like I've done everything in my power to put myself in the best position. I think I heard it. I think I hear it. Steph Curry of our wonderful Golden State Warriors. OK, well, with that, I will um, pass along the mic. Thank you, guys. So, so Felix has a quick announcement about uh, climate election. I'll just say really quickly that for elections, we don't participate in them with our CCL hats on. Um, we take our CCL hats off for that. And with our CCL hats on, we wait to see who comes into office, and then we build relationships with those people. So here's Felix. Thank you. I'm Felix Kramer, and thanks to CCL for giving me a minute to talk about a nonpartisan idea that can uh, be very, uh, help advance CCL's goals. So just remember one thing, climateelection.org, and imagine if every candidate taking office at, a, at any forum were asked questions about climate. Uh, that's our goal. Uh, we uh, are working to approach 80 leaders of organizations and thought leaders uh, with a single slogan, climate election, a single launch event, and a single activity, which is just what uh, 
uh, Jay Butera said, which is talk about climate change everywhere and often, without apology, without defensiveness. So that's what we really need. We all know that. So Thursday, 350 Bay Area endorsed this idea. We're talking about it with you, not asking for an endorsement, but for volunteers. Next, we're going to go to Sierra Club and Climate Reality in the Bay Area. And the idea is to start a local San Francisco Bay Area climate election working group to show what's possible. And uh, if you saw this flyer, there's some description about what it's all about. So we're asking uh, for people here to consider helping to make buttons and posters and messaging and tweets and so forth uh, as a group to envision what it would be like if we had a climate election everywhere in the country. So uh, that's all you really need to remember, climateelection.org, or come and see me uh, anytime today. Thanks a lot. All right. And next, I have a group from CCL who is here to share about fundraising, a recent fundraising effort, the, the success of that. and. Uh, Perhaps I want to acknowledge the foundation that really gives it for our group to, to operate. So thank you. Come on out. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Andy Beers, and I'm here with Ellen Dooley from San Mateo and Jonathan Maltz from San Francisco. So yeah, I'm just going to say a few words about our year-end appeal. Um, and to start off, there's no real way to begin other than by saying thank you to everybody for your incredible generosity. Um, as I think that most or all of you are aware, this year's appeal was built on a $600,000 matching gift pool that was created by 60 donors known as the Women Who Will and Generous Gentlemen. And every, each and every one of them gave $10,000 towards this effort. So this was very exciting, but also slightly nerve-wracking. We, we had to bring in another $600,000 in the closing weeks of the year. So how did we land? The final number, when all was said and done, $870,158. Yeah. So yeah, once again, everybody really rose to the challenge, more than a quarter million dollars above our goal. Um, and that meant it was about $1.5 million when you include the matching grants just in the course of the month. So amazing job. Um, that's a huge amount for an organization like ours, and what's more, um, as uh, Mark mentioned before, we've now brought in another million dollars from the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Um, yeah, it's a two-year million dollar grant, and I hope you all see that the same way that I do. It, it's such a testimony to an endorsement of all the work that everyone's doing and the results that people are getting in the field. You know, they vet the organization very closely, and it's such a vote of confidence for what everyone's doing. So give yourselves a hand on that. So this is all happening at a great time. Um, we've, we're doubling once again this year to about 92,000 registered supporters. And as you all know, this is not a normal volunteer-run organization. Um, CCLers do very subtle, very complicated work. And that can be sort of daunting when people first come on board. And when we're growing at this pace, it's really important that we have the support structures in place to make people feel as welcomed and as supported as everyone did when Mark was here doing the first kind of four Northern California chapters years ago. Um, so our budget for doing that right now, for 2017, our combined budget for CCL and for CCE was three and a half million dollars. This year, to keep up with the 92,000 supporters, that's going to expand to around $5 million. Um, that expansion is going to include a lot of aspects of our support systems, um, but a few things that we're looking at and that are priorities that I'd like to share are expanding hours for all regional and state coordinators. Yeah. <laughs> Adding a state-level carbon pricing and initiatives coordinator. Hiring a diversity outreach coordinator. Yeah. And moving into a larger office in D.C. Um, that's incredibly important, not only because we have an expanding staff in D.C., but right now it's a very constrained space, and there's no dedicated place where they can have private meetings with NGOs. And as things go forward, it's really important that we put our best foot forward there. So I'm really excited about that. So uh, with that, I'd like to turn things over to generous gentleman Jonathan Maltz.
Uh, kind of feels weird to be 27 and being called a gentleman, but I guess this is what it feels like to, to be an adult. Uh, <laughs> Uh, so yeah, so there are some, uh, for me when I was thinking about this, I think the biggest thing for me was that uh, there's some moments sort of in my life that have really stuck out in my mind. Uh, and Ellen's fundraising pitch at last year's Northern California conference was one of those moments for me. Uh, I distinctly remember sort of sitting in the Berkeley equivalent of where you are and remembering how she's, what she said uh, for how you know if you are ready to be one of the women who will or one of the generous gentlemen. Uh, she said you start to feel a little bit warm on the inside and you start to run the numbers in your head and you start to realize it was possible. Uh, and lo and behold, I started to feel a little warm inside and I started to run the numbers in my head and I started to realize it was possible. Uh, but I stayed in my seat uh, and I didn't say anything. Uh, flash forward six months later uh, to the national conference in DC. Uh, she said the same thing. I started to feel a little warm. I started to run the numbers. Uh, they still worked out. Uh, and I stayed in my seat yet again. Uh, but the question of why I didn't stand up and why I didn't do this sort of continued to nag me uh, for a couple more months until I was re reminded by uh, a scene from the movie Coach Carter, which is actually about an inner city basketball team. Uh, and in it, the narrator says, uh, one of our deepest fears is not that we are inadequate. It is that we are powerful beyond measure. Uh, I realized that I wasn't really concerned about the money. Uh, I knew it was going to be there because I'd run the numbers twice already, uh, and they worked out every time. Uh, the thing was, I was actually scared of sort of recognizing this power that I had as such a young person uh, and being able to make it such a large impact on something that meant so much to me. Uh, so ultimately, with some support from, from, with some, support from some friends, uh, I emailed Lynette and I said, Lynette, I want to do this, and I wrote her a check. Uh, and that turned out to, interestingly, be one of the most empowering experiences uh, I ever done. Uh, so if you're sitting in a similar position to me and you're running the numbers in your head right now uh, and thinking, can I do this? Uh, I'd urge you to not be scared uh, of your own power uh, and realize that you too are able to make an impact on this organization uh, by, joining one of the women who, by joining the women who will, our generous gentlemen. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ellen. Thank you. I don't think I need to say anything now. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I wanted to share with you why I've been a woman who will, one of the women who will for two years, and I'm going to do it again this year. And it's really very simple. I have two granddaughters, and one of them's three, and one of them's one. And I want them to be able to enjoy the things that I've just taken for granted my whole life. Uh, and I'm concerned that they may not. And I won't be here to see, so I want to do what I can while I'm here. And, but why do I give it this level? And uh, that's a whole different story, and it has to do with the organization. And frankly, I, I, and I said this like a million times, I love CCL. I, I love the work we do. Uh, I think that legislation is the way to go. It's the right work in climate change, so it's a no-brainer for me. Um, secondly, I love our values. I mean, we all saw them this morning. I love that we're nonpartisan. I love that we believe that you can really make solid change when people can talk to one another. And we're trained, we're given the tools to learn how to have those difficult conversations and to respect people from other sides of the position. So, you know, it's like, how, it doesn't get any better than that for me. It's like, I, I couldn't have thought it up any better than that. And I also feel that CCL is very dynamic. You know, this environment we're in, with our climate and with our politics, it's changing like every day. And I believe that CCL is dynamic, always looking for the next place to go and kind of, you know, um, mobilizing to direct our energy and our attention on those things that are critical today and tomorrow and always being on that leading edge. The last thing is, should be the first, and that is that I trust this organization with my donation. Um, I've known Mark, we were just doing the math, and it's almost 40 years. And when I came to CCL and found out that Mark was the executive director, it was on a YouTube video. I don't know if I ever told you that, Mark, but when I was looking for where was I going to participate, I started Googling climate organizations. I saw a YouTube video of Mark interviewing somebody or somebody interviewing him, and it was like, oh my god. Mark is running this, I'm in. And it's true, he has so much integrity, he has so much passion, so much commitment, and he's fun. And, but in terms of spending the money, I trust that every dollar that I give is going to be well spent. And so for me, it's a no-brainer. It is really the best investment I could make for my grandchildren's future. 
And so before I was a woman who will, I was a monthly donor. And I want to say something to all of you who are donating at whatever level you give. You are providing the foundation of funding for CCL. There really is nothing more important than those $25, $50, $100 donations, $1,000 donations, because that's what keeps the doors opening every day and doing the work that we're doing. Why did I choose to do 10,000? Because it's extremely uncomfortable for me. Um, I don't like writing the check, honestly. It's like, do I have to do this again? And then I do it. And the truth of the matter is, like Jonathan said, it's the best thing I do. It's so empowering. It's like the money that I'm giving as a woman who will, one of the women who will, is like a booster engine to the organization. It's like, you know, I'm helping to infuse rocket fuel to CCL so that we can open a bigger office in DC, so that we can pivot on a, in a, you know, in a moment to grab whatever we need to grab to be able to do the work we need to do. And I am so, um, fulfilled and rewarded to be able to be in that role for CCL. And you know, it's not for CCL, it's for me. This is my passion, this is my commitment. I couldn't do this by myself. And you and CCL as an organization is fulfilling my passion. And so for me, it's an investment in my own passion. It's really funny, I don't give the money to CCL in a way, I'm giving it to my my commitment into what I'm passionate about and the organization I trust to do the work. So it's now become a tradition that we invite everybody at these conferences to join us. Last year, the goal in January, we're standing not right here, but in Alameda, the goal was 50. We were, we, the first year we had, t the goal was 10 women who will. We blew that out of the park, we went to 15. So last year it was like, okay, let's let the guys play. So we went for 25, women and 25 generous gentlemen. So in January, I stood here, first time ever doing something like this, and I was so nervous, and it was a really risky thing to say, you know, stand up if you want to do this, because I had no idea who would or if anyone would. And eight of you stood up. And as Mark said, the Northern California region really does set the pace for the rest of the country. And this eight, are, are any of you here today of the eight that stood up? Would you just kind of make yourselves known? We were the pioneers in this. And we do lead the country. We launch, we're launching the year off here with this conference as the first one. And we set the stage and we can build some momentum for the year. So we have the opportunity today to do that. Uh, our goal this year is 50 women who will and 50 generous gentlemen because last year not did we get we didn't just get to 50 we got to 60 so of course we're going to go bigger we're going to go for 100 this year and that will raise a million dollars and that million dollars will be matched in november and bring in two million for citizens climate education so i'm going to give you a moment to think about if you are a generous gentleman or a woman who will because i imagine we have some in the room and it's also for those of you from 2017 that want to choose to do this again. Uh, and if you're fresh to this, and this is something maybe you thought about last year, but like Jonathan, you kind of didn't want to stand up or didn't want to commit right away, uh, I want to give you that opportunity. And if you're wondering <laughs> if you are somebody who is a generous gentleman or one of us, woman who will, here's the hint. And he already kind of told you. He stole my thunder, but that's okay. Because <laughs> it's still true. If you're sitting there and you're running the numbers or you're having a conversation like I did, which was, oh my God, I would love to do this, but I don't know if I can. And then this fear comes up like that's, I think I can. I really think I can. And I got warm and my heart started to pound and it was just like, th at that point I wanted to jump out of my seat. So that's why we decided to give you that chance to jump out of your seat. So <laughs> I'm going to give you a second to kind of like think about this, but not too long. <laughs> All right, ready? So I'll <laughs> we'll do a little drum roll. If for 2018 you are a generous gentleman or a woman who will, would you please stand up? <laughs> wow. Thank 
<laughs> Whoa, I'm always blown away by all of you. Um, would you come up and see me? And if you stayed in your seat because you didn't want to jump, you're welcome to come see me too. Anybody that knows anybody that could give at that level, Andy and I will be right here at the break. And please come see us so we can get your information. And thank you so much for your courage and for your generosity. Thank you. Thank you.